Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about what I feel is a very interesting and also very controversial topic. I actually greatly underestimated how much, how many layers and how much depth this specific topic has to it, but there is almost too much to cover. I'm going to just touch on what I feel comfortable talking about today and just the main points that I want to touch on. If you don't know, I'm sure you do. I used to be a part of the luxury community for seven years and I no longer consider myself part of that community. However, I do still have a lot of designer items. I still consider myself and I have talked about what I consider to be a luxurious lifestyle, which we will touch on as well later. And like I said, I do enjoy very uh, analytical and in-depth um, conversations, which I think we can have today. And I'd really love for this to be a conversation. So please share with me your thoughts in the comments down below. My opinions on this particular topic are probably very unpopular, but here we are. The beautiful thing about the internet is everyone's allowed to have an opinion. Quiet luxury is actually where it's at for me. I think the concept for me is, is not what the mainstream and what a lot of social media consider to be quiet luxury. Mostly probably because I'm not in the in the trenches of the fashion space and I'm not, I don't get served quite luxury content on TikTok, but I have heard from other people who say that it reeks of classism, elitism, and also racism. I have my own definition and what I believe to be quite luxury, which is separate from, I think, what the mainstream considers quite luxury. What I believe to be quite luxury is simply a style and a way of living. I personally believe and you know I've talked about this I'm gonna have a, a specific video where I talked about my new idea of luxury because I believe that I do live a luxurious lifestyle and I believe that you can live a luxurious lifestyle regardless of what you choose to wear and what you choose to like, what clothes you choose to put on your back I think my idea of luxury is very different to this whole mainstream idea of luxury and I personally think that luxury quiet luxury in the in the fashion sphere is more the idea of very classic, very neutral wardrobes, very timeless uh, fabrics, very timeless cuts and designs, and a lot of very minimal branding and almost like this, you know, when we think of brands like The Row or Laura, Laura Piani, I don't believe that you need to be dressed in thousand dollar, you know, thousands of dollars of fabrics to exude the, the look of quiet luxury, personally. But I suppose in the fashion spirit, it is very much that idea of a lot of those brands or at least replicating what we've always known is just to be a very simple minimalistic timeless wardrobe i personally think fashion has always been a sign of the times fashion has always been a sign of what's happening in our surroundings and i mean at the moment with the the state of the economy and also the the rise of petty crimes and I mean, just a lot of a lot more heat in, within this political sphere that's led to a lot more petty crimes and just violence throughout major cities. I think that those two elements is what really contributes to this whole explosion of quiet luxury. But I also think it's probably just a matter of if you look at any particular trend or any any issue within the world, we definitely exist on a pendulum where we really swing so far. <laughs> <laughs> each way and we very rarely make it in the make it to the middle and even if we do it does take quite a lot of extreme pendulum swings before we find our way to more of a, a centered a centered way so i think you know a few years ago we had so much emphasis on logo mania and logos and you know flex and dripping and whatever else you know a real emphasis on very bright bold colors a lot of logo like we were seeing head to toe logos we've seen it before we saw it again you know fashion comes back and now we've seen such a large swing in the opposite direction to this whole idea of quiet luxury i don't think that i i like that type of look because some people would say that it, it is rooted in, you know, racism, elitism, and class, classism. I believe that I like that particular idea of more soft, quiet luxury because it, it resonates me because of what I've experienced over the last seven years and the, sh and the very dramatic shift that I've made, not only within my wardrobe, but it's actually very much a shift that I felt within my life. You know, if you know my history, you know I spent a lot of time and a, an obscene amount of money on logos, on, on designer items, and an excessive consumption of of things that you know if you even go so far back on onto a lot of my my videos and the history of my channel you know i had a tagline of you know it's a disease it's a disease it's an obsession it's a serious illness and 
I think in that moment and in a lot of times we don't realize how powerful words are powerful and I didn't think I was seriously so obsessed and almost unhealthily obsessed with logos and flexing and like almost covering up my insecurities by my outfits and I'm being honest right now I know a lot of people say that they wear logos and they dress head to toe in designer items and real flashy items because that's just how they like to dress but maybe that's true but for me I, I used to use that as a reason I used to say that but actually looking back the truth was I was incredibly insecure and I was deeply insecure about what I was lacking and I thought that by covering it up with logos and designer items it made me enough in actual fact I don't believe it makes you enough it just covers it up like a band-aid it covers up those insecurities like a band-aid it doesn't actually heal anything I used to joke it was like an obsession an addiction a disease I first had to acknowledge it I had to diagnose it and then I had to step away and remedy it and I, I think that quiet luxury was and is the cure for me quiet luxury and stepping away from an excessive consumption of brands is what has has helped me cure it I mean granted yes I still have a few logo pieces in my wardrobe I still have brand names in my wardrobe but I'm feeling less and less like I want to gravitate towards them I, I don't feel the need to to have logos splattered on my outfits I mean granted this is a, a graphic t-shirt this is by Acne Studios it says propaganda propaganda <laughs> propaganda it's very much my Australian accent pop, popping out I think in the traditional sense it's not considered quite luxury it's it's not it's not a uh, you know classic elegant timeless to me it's timeless it's a graphic you know sweatshirt I love this kind of casual relaxed style but this isn't I suppose the mainstream's idea of quiet luxury but like I said my definition of quiet luxury is very different there does seem to be this very strong division not everyone obviously but there are a lot of people and a lot of noise from both sides with people from the quiet luxury sphere saying you know you're tacky you're trying too hard like you're obnoxious you're gross ew so many logos and then the logo people are like oh my god you're so boring you're so granny like get a personality you know all you wear is beige <laughs> there's very much a divisive uh a divisive tone to this whole this or that like you're it's this versus that this concept of stealth wealth it's like kind of tied to quiet luxury but this is probably a little bit controversial and this is some of you gonna probably like roast my ass for this but I just think if you're trying to look rich like if you're trying really hard to kind of put on this facade or if you're if you're actively trying to to dress in a way that makes you look rich like if you're out here looking for I mean it can go both ways if you're out here trying to dress like you belong in a country club and you come from you know old money you're trying to look rich on the other side if you're out here trying to dress head to toe on logos because you think that makes you look rich they're both I personally think they're both kind of giving off the same energy it's like trying to look rich when you actually aren't and a lot of it is a lot of it's the ego talking and a lot of it's this idea that we just want to fit in we just want to fit in and we are very tribal creatures I mean like right now this outfit I'm wearing let me get up and show you we hope I didn't flash you just then but this outfit very much signals to the world something that maybe some people might not notice maybe unintentionally I put this outfit on today I didn't think about the deep reasons as to why I purposely left my hair straight it wasn't a conscious decision like I didn't actually think about it in this much detail but subconsciously I wanted to give off an edgy look I didn't want to do my soft bouncy curls because to me they're very feminine but no I wanted to give off this like you know edgy cool girl we all like to portray a certain image with our style and what we choose to wear and I do think that regardless of whether you're into more quiet luxury and more subtle luxury like you are also portraying something there you are portraying a certain image but I think that what we're forgetting is that on the other side the the people who dress in logos people who dress very loud people who wear certain things regardless of what you wear you're portraying a certain image and you're buying into certain concepts and beliefs and kind of signaling to the outside world certain things about you maybe intentionally or maybe unintentionally an interesting take that I want to I want to share with you that I'd really love to hear your opinion on is I think for the most part a lot of people do want to look pol polished put together and like like they have money and I think that's why knockoffs have really escalated and I think that's why knockoffs have really become such a bigger a bigger market and there's you know there's so many more knockoffs these days knockoffs are becoming more common a lot of Gen Z and Millennials are buying knockoffs or spending their money um, to kind of portray that certain image you know knockoffs are for the most part really hard to to spot especially a lot of these really good fakes there's a lot of that illusion of 
portraying a certain image. And it's almost as if knockoffs and logo mania has become so common that you know, probably because of also social media, we almost feel the need to like, okay, well then what's next? Where do we go from here? What's next? Logo mania and logos, and they still do, I think, to some degree, but they almost signal to the rest of the world that that person has money, that person is rich. But I almost feel like now, because they've come become so common, back in the day, you very rarely saw, I mean, especially for me in my city, back in the day, Louis Vuitton bags were very far and few between. I very rarely saw a lot of people with designer bags, but I guess now as well because of social media, but you know, people are buying designer bags younger and younger than ever before. And if they're not buying designer bags, they're buying fake designer bags, knockoff designer bags. And I suppose once we've hit that threshold, it's like, well then where do we go from there? Where, we, we can only go, we can only keep going up. And the next spot, the next place, I guess, is, well, what are the uber, uber rich doing? What are the uber wealthy doing? And again, I'm stereotyping, but while I was actually researching for a little bit of this video, I was really curious because I was like, well, what do billionaires wear? Like, what do they wear? And I found myself, and do this with me and see if you find anything, okay? Because again, like I said, I didn't spend hours on this. I could have, it could have been a whole friggin' thesis. I could have spent like, I could have spent like four years on this particular topic. But I found myself Googling the, the billion, like billionaire females of the world and the richest women of the world. And I found myself Googling them. And the things that I found were, I, it's hard to find them, okay? They're very private women. They weren't really wearing the traditional quiet luxury. They weren't, I mean, a lot of them weren't wearing soft pastel, yacht clubbing, country going, like they didn't, a lot of them didn't look like that. I saw quite a, like a cool amount of like, you know, quirky kind of images, you know, but they also weren't wearing really loud logo mania type of outfits either. And then I found myself looking, well, what does Oprah Winfrey wear? <laughs> I was just trying to look at all these different women that I could think of, like when I think of wealth, and success, I found myself Googling different women and what they like to wear. The everyday person was not walking around with designer items. I mean, even now, it's not super, super common, but I'm seeing a lot more designer items. I'm seeing a lot more, you know, Gucci belts, or Louis Vuitton, it's, uh, bags, Gucci bags, Louis Vuitton bags, Chanel bags even. I feel like it's almost become a little bit more mainstream, and once upon a time, it was only a select few people who, you know, if you were carrying a Louis Vuitton bag, like, oh, we're in a club, like, we're in a secret club together, like, you know, we both, we see each other. Whereas I feel like now it's almost swung and it's almost had to head to a whole nother level of, well now it's like, it's such a, it's even more an exclusive secret club of, you know, well, if you know, you know. And this happens in many different areas of life. Like the amount of time that I'm driving with my boyfriend and he's like, oh my God, Caitlin, look at that car. Do you know how much that car is worth? And I'm like, no. And he tells me and it's this obscene amount and I don't even, I, 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 don't, I don't know what it is. It's like a secret club, you know, not everyone. If you, if you know fashion, if you know cars, you know this, you signal it to other people in like a secret way. It looks cool, it looks nice, but you don't really know the, the specs. I think it's very much a, a case of that. I think it's, if you know, you know. Middle class people are buying more and more luxury. Whereas I think once upon a time, it was more reserved for people who were kind of upper middle class and people who could afford to spend money in that way. Whereas now people are, you know, putting these things on credit cards and if they're not, they're buying fakes that look really real and signaling to the rest of the world that they can afford these types of things. Social media has definitely exposed us to a lot more than once we were exposed to and really we once knew about. I also think that we've definitely been exposed to the lives of uber uber wealthy people so much more than ever before and you know we show shows like succession which personally i've never seen we see so much more behind the lives of the rich and famous the uber rich and famous shows like the kardashians you know and i think during i don't want to say it because you know this video will get but that time we all went through in like 2019 2020 where a lot of us were stuck at home in lockdown unable to go anywhere unable to leave our houses but you know, we'd hear and things would get uncovered about politicians and you know, like the, the uber, uber wealthy, wealthy businessmen, wealthy people around the world. We heard of them that they kind of lived in their own world. They live in their own world and they live by their own rules. It's like a whole nother world. And we kind of, I think then is when we really became exposed to it because they were immune to it. You know, they were off partying on their private island, jet setting around the world. Whereas us regular folk, you know, planes were shut down. Our shops were shut down. We were shut down. And I think seeing that level of what the uber wealthy are able to, to do and get away with, we saw that they live in their own world and they live in their own secret club that a lot of the time now their secrets aren't really a secret, but it just makes sense that we've now become exposed to that. And as a society, a lot of us kind of strive towards that, that type of energy in our own lives.
We want to exude wealth. We want to exude a sense of, look at me. <laughs> I'm not speaking for everyone, and again, at the end of the day, you know, wear what you want to wear, wear what you want to wear because of it's what you want to wear. Going back to those billionaires that I told you about, a lot of them I saw weren't dripping in head-to-toe luxury, you know, a lot of them didn't look like they, again, it's so hard to find images of them, but the ones I saw, they didn't look like they were dressed in all white off to their country club either. They they wore what they want to wear. They they, wore, they wear what they want to wear, and I highly doubt they are super concerned with looking wealthy or looking rich. If anything, they're probably trying to give off maybe even the opposite. But also, they're probably just minding their business, just getting on with their lives, you know, making money, wearing what they want to wear. I personally have moved moved away from a lot of logo mania and like I guess yeah I guess you could say I'm moving towards more of a quiet luxury aesthetic my idea of what quiet luxury aesthetic is and it's not because I want to look rich or it's not because I want to look well off it's not because I'm trying to look like I'm old money it's because of what shopping and what chasing labels for you know almost 10 years did to me shopping and chasing the specific labels and specific things that I was chasing at the time I was trying to portray something about myself that I think I, I wouldn't I wouldn't admit to myself then and I wouldn't admit to anyone else. Whereas now looking back I can admit, yeah, like I was I was wearing logos head to toe and I was trying really hard to to wear things that were different and unique and you know trendy because I wanted it to be look at me. I'm doing well. I'm wearing like look how much this outfit costs, you can tell because it's head to toe logos. Like you there's a lot of logos here. Look at it, look at the subtle flexes. And following on from that point, actually look this video is so all over the place, but I almost wonder if we will, will we see a, f a trickle on effect of like knockoff quiet luxury? Like, is there knockoff quiet luxury out there? I don't know. Maybe. Can you even knock off quiet luxury? I don't know if you can. I think quiet luxury is just a fancy word for minimalist, timeless fashion. I think the ultimate luxury <laughs> is not getting sucked in, not getting sucked into the vortex of of spending excessive amounts of money on on fashion and on labels and on designer items i think that's that's true luxury i think true luxury is not is not racking up credit card debt because you're just so sucked into the vortex of trying to keep up i think that's true luxury and i think that's not what people and that's not what these brands want you to realize like no they're, they're trying to sell you the dream of luxury when actual in actual fact that's not luxury at all there's there's one thing better than looking rich and looking like you have money and that's actually having money okay that's actually having the money to be able to do whatever you want with and have that freedom. And if you want to spend spend it on designer clothes, spend them on designer clothes. But, you know, getting yourself so stressed out and maxing out your credit cards for luxury is not, it's that's not true luxury. That's scary and that's stressful. I don't think like the uber, uber wealthy are out here trying to figure out, you know, how they can look rich. What a whirlwind of things we've covered today. Are you okay? Like, I should have told you to strap in. Do you feel a bit, whew, I do. It's a lot, this topic, like we could sit here for hours. We could discuss this for hours. But at the end of the day, I do think it's just becoming a bit too, I think it's just not that deep. I just don't, I think it's funny because it is deep. It's very deep, it's very layered. But on the other hand, I also think, look, it's not that deep, okay? We don't have to take it so personally. If people want to wear logos, if people want to dress in logos and you know, shout from the rooftops with their fashion, that's what they want to do. If people want to appeal to a select group of people and live in a secret club and, and wear beige and white and neutrals, no one's gonna stop them. The fashion police are, are, are not a legitimate thing. And neither of these groups of people will be stopped, nor should they really, because you know, at the end of the day, you can wear whatever you want. People can and indeed will continue to wear whatever they want. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. What a what an interesting, like it's just such a juicy topic. I feel like if this topic was a Subway sandwich, it would be a foot long, okay? It would be the biggest foot long of life and all we've done is take a bite. All we've done is take a little nibble. What a strange analogy, but I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I really look forward to hearing from you in the comments down below. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm gonna have another one linked for you right here. If you haven't had enough of me just yet, feel free to join me over there. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video and I will see you in my next one.